911, state your emergency. over at um, a high school today that's implemented the Students Train Free program and we got to talking about distracted driving and how um, texting and driving or any kind of distracted driving can add up to a 23 times fold risk for an accident and then we started talking about the mechanism of injury related to high-speed car accidents and I thought it was something that would be worthy to communicate um, to help shed some light on why people die and then stay dead oftentimes when they're found in cardiac arrest secondary to a traumatic injury like a motor vehicle accident. I think some of the, the, the fundamentals to remember here is that whenever in a body or a human is involved in a car accident, we tend to have three different collisions taking place. We have the vehicle that's slamming into some object then we have the body of the, of the person inside the car slamming into the vehicle itself. And then we have the free-floating organs, whether that be the brain, the heart, the lungs, other types of vascular organs that are slamming into the inside of the body or in the inside of the skull or rib cage. And when we experience those kinds of forces in a motor vehicle accident, especially high-speed motor vehicle accidents, sometimes the forces can be so severe that we're literally rupturing like the aorta. It's tearing the heart off the aorta and that individual then bleeds and, and um, bleeds to death extremely fast through hemorrhage. And the same thing can happen through a heart contusion or through um, some type of vascular organ rupture. But sometimes I think it's easy to forget that just because we have our seatbelt on does not necessarily mean that we are going to be safe in any type of accident and you know even though we're seat belted in the accident even though there may be airbags remember there's going to be a rapid deceleration that occurs whenever we're involved in an accident and the higher the speed the higher the velocity now there's a lot of technology going into uh, motor vehicle creation to help absorb and disperse energies which will draw those energies and that rapid deceleration away from the body and, and help the, the person to survive, and that's true, that is happening, and it's helping, but in the end, whenever we have a force and, and our vehicle or our body is traveling at a high velocity of speed and we stop suddenly, there's always going to be a secondary or a third impact, and that's the vital organs and different parts of our body inside of our body as well. So just a brief understanding that when that happens, um, sometimes we find those individuals that are already in cardiac arrest. We work them anyways, obviously, as lay rescuers. If you find them unresponsive, unless there's potentially obvious signs of morbidity like decapitation or, um, you know, the person's mangled to the point that they just, it's clear. Common sense tells you they're not going to survive. But again, that's up to your judgment. So no one's going to be pointing the finger, nobody should be pointing the finger at you if you begin CPR because your heart tells you to begin CPR. And you never know when that person's miracle is going to happen to them. So of course we give them the best chance whenever possible. But if they don't survive and your CPR does not help them survive, please don't allow that to make you feel some form of blame or like you're the one that caused them not to survive. It's a serious accident. It causes serious trauma externally and internally, and that's a hard cardiac arrest to survive from. From Roy on Rescue, I hope this helped. More to come soon. Keep on rescuing, and we'll talk to you really soon. Bye-bye.